Brunswick Lane County Joint Water Sewer Commission meeting for May 18, 2017, September order. We have a uh, quorum. Uh, Commissioner Copeland will give the invocation and I'll leave the pledge. You all join us in staff. Father God, we praise you, Lord, for, for being our God. And we praise you for all that is good. We rejoice, Lord, in knowing that, that you are the source of all that is good in this world. Lord, we just we just ask that you be with us today as we as we carry out the business of the county with the Water and Sewer Commission. And we just ask that you give us the guidance and the knowledge that we need to do the best for the citizens of, citizens of the county as we can, and that we treat one, treat one another respectfully. And we ask all these things in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have anybody signed up for public comment? No, sir. I didn't know I had to sign up, but I had a question. Uh, come ahead and go forward and state your name and uh, your residence. I'm John Michelle. I live at 809 Bucks Farms Road. My question is, after your last meeting, there was a notice in the paper regarding a change of plan for the Peninsula Code development. I wanted information on what that might be. Okay. Um, we're going to discuss that in executive session, and the commission will come out afterwards, and we'll, we'll have a vote on um, what's going to happen down there uh, and a, a change. So I, uh, I don't want to take anything away from the commissioner's opportunity to uh, have a discussion and come to a conclusion as to what they want to do. So it should be reported in the news tomorrow or whenever Taylor gets in order. You're certainly welcome to stay till after the meeting and I'll discuss it with you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to have a presentation of employee uh, recognition at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robert Ernest White. Here. First of all, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, the State Board of Examiners for a Certification of Water and Wastewater Treatment Plant Operators and Laboratory Analysts recognize the following uh, you, recognize you uh, for uh, certification of wastewater collection system operator. Um, it is permitted to practice wastewater collection system operator in the state of Georgia. You're entitled to all the privileges allowed under the Registration Act of Georgia. In other words, uh, you have received your license to, to work your boss is who? Who's your boss? Uh, Ray Okay. All right. Well, is he here? Uh, no, sir. He was actually busy. Okay. I don't be here. Yeah, first. Okay. This is very important, you know, because now you, you are certified to do the things that we hired you to do and, and also make this, this organization great. So we don't take lightly um, certification. And please don't you take it lightly either, yes, because sir. you need to, because you have the, um, Health and welfare of all our citizens here in Brunswick in County uh, at your beck and call right there. So, um, so we thank you for for what you've done, what you did, how you get the certification, and also we wish for all the great things happen to you in the future. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At this time, uh, in addition to the. Uh, Agenda. We're going to introduce the financial uh, rate consultant, Mr. Junkin. Um, just wanted to uh, introduce. We're looking at some options to make our uh, rate structure more effective. We're going to be testing the sensitivity of what we're doing and trying to make sure that whatever we do, we keep our rates affordable for our community. 
and this is a special niche above and beyond what we've been doing. And to that end, we've uh, reached out to a firm, Reftelis Financial Consultants, and Mr. Tony Hairston is our uh, representative from uh, Reftelis. Uh, Reftelis, uh, Tony can probably give you a little more background than I can, but I know that they're a uh, widely respected uh, utility rate <coughs> and financial consultant within the utilities industry. Uh, highly recommended work. Uh, Primarily in the southeast? Uh, across the U.S. Yeah. Across the U.S.? Uh, firstly, across the uh, southeast primarily. You may have order, but it, we're, we're, we're looking forward to working with Tony and with the Raptelis team to work through some issues that we've come across that we think uh, uh, offer opportunities to make sure, uh, as, as they say, everybody's paying their fair share and that we try to keep the rates within a, a a structure that will keep it affordable to our community while meeting our needs to provide the same level of service we have in the past. Uh, to that end, uh, welcome to board. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Looking forward to working together. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go to committee reports. Uh, Commissioner Brownlee on compliance and legislative. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, yesterday the committee met and uh, we uh, had a report from Angela Walker. Uh, uh, there was a number of items on the list, but primarily the, the uh, discussion centered around pre-treatment in terms of uh, Greece and one restaurant in particular, some issues that she's encountered and how, how, how to deal with those issues. And, and also um, one of the other items of uh, importance were the um, pre-treatment permits for some of the heavier users in Glen County. Uh, still trying to iron out all the details of one of them in particular, and a second user has come up and got some questions, and she's dealing with those uh, questions that she thought would be resolved. But uh, sounds like she's got a handle on that. And then, the um, second issue a discussion made by Executive Director Junkin, uh, uh, talking about maybe going to our local delegation and seeing if there's any. Um, uh, anything that can be done in terms of a um, getting uh, legislative consideration for JWSC to find some additional funding uh, by issuing their own squads or something of that nature. And uh, third discussion, Mr. Donahue gave us a um, report on the uh, draft of, if you will, the verbiage changes in the rate resolution. And uh, that's the extent of my Thanks, sir. Um, facilities did not meet. Uh, the Finance Committee, uh, we went through the uh, construction, proposed construction award, which we'll address later in uh, the section on approval. Section on approval. Uh, then the appointment of an auditor, which will also be discussed in the approval section. And an accounts receivable policy, which will also be discussed. Uh, we discussed the proposed rate and fee structures, and uh, at the next commission meeting, the commissioners will be uh, provided uh, the staff proposed uh, rate and fee structures to uh, approve to go forward as part of the town hall meeting. That's still not your approval for the final rates and fees. Um, and we also talked and we'll go through here in a few minutes. The ending uh, of April financial comparative uh, worksheets. So that's all that we covered there. Uh, human resources. We did not meet, sir. And public information and customer relations. We did not meet, sir. Uh, well, we're going to meet. I think we're going to meet uh, May the 30th there at 2 o'clock <laughs> in this room. Yeah. So items for saving. Yep. Items for approval of the minutes from the 4 May commission meeting. If you file, please review them. And we have some executive minutes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to accept the minutes from May 4, 2017. Second. 
meeting has uh, been reported here. One second. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The minutes are approved. Motion on the executive minutes. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion <coughs> to accept the uh, minutes from May 4, 2017, the 17 executive session. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Uh, minutes are approved. Okay. Ms. Crosby? Good afternoon. Uh, this item should be pretty straightforward. Um, we've been talking for a while on Project 701, which is the pump station 4048 uh, force main improvements. Uh, going on with various project milestones. Today's milestone is we've received construction bids and we're requesting an award to a contractor. Um, we had initially six people attend our pre-bid meeting with three of those firms uh, pre-qualifying and we received a bid from each of those. Um, you'll see in the center of the memo uh, the descending dollar values of the, the bids we received. And TD Landmark Construction out of Jacksonville, Florida was the apparent low bidder at um, 1478103. Um, and what we're looking to do is uh, have you guys approve that award today and move forward. The goal is to have um, this project probably start the early part of July. 120-day project. Um, if you'll recall, you had approved uh, the pre-purchase of the pipe and then the fittings at another meeting, and so we're just trying to coordinate the deliveries of all of those items. Uh, the pipe seems to be on schedule, should be here the last week of June. Uh, and from there, we're waiting to see the fittings, looking for some railroad permits to be approved and, and move forward on that. But today, we're just discussing the award um, of the construction itself to the apparent low bidder family. So if anybody has some questions, I can. Would you go over the total price of this project? The total price of this project was about $2.1 million. And so um, the pipe was obviously more expensive for this project um, than the pipe that we pre-purchased for 2032, one due to the size and also due to the increase um, in the resin markets that um, we've seen after the first of the year. <coughs> We do believe we probably had some cost avoidance by pre-purchasing the pipe ourselves because there won't be a contractor markup on that. Don't know if that necessarily mitigates any increase because the resin increases have been pretty significant in those markets. Um, so when you add in where we're at um, engineering, uh, I think we're about 110,000 at this point on engineering for the project, about 370 on pipe, and then this 1.47 for construction, we're right at the $2 million that, that we have projected for the project at this point. Questions? Questions? Uh, question. Have we ever used TB Landmark construction before? Yes, sir. They're the current contractor for Pump Station 2032, and they were also a subcontractor for Popco on the 2030 project. They actually did all the um, horizontal directional drilling. And just so you know, um, the pre-qualification process, what we did is we had each uh, prime submit their qualifications for five similar projects and also the people that would be doing the primary drilling here, five references too. And so out of those six, we were able to actually, we only received three pre-qual apps, but all three we did pre-qual. Were we satisfied with uh, TV Landmark Construction's uh, performance? Yes. I mean, obviously the project's not completely done, but I think on the updates you've been getting every month, we haven't had a lot of um, issues with that project so far. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I move that approval be granted to award the contract for construction to TV Landmark Incorporated for the lift station 4048 Forest Main Improvements, project number 701 in the amount of one million. $478,103. I'll second. 
Is there any discussion? Where, where would we go store with pipe at the mall? Is it on the one that's Hawk Field? It'll be Hawk Park or Hawk Field, yeah. and they're going to um, establish a lay down yard very similar to what they did for the 2032 project. They'll have their job trailer there, and it'll be fenced in and secure. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, call for the vote. Everyone in favor of awarding the contract to TV Landmark, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Palmer. Commissioners, you'll find in your package it's a memo on the uh, selection of an auditor for the fiscal year ending 2017, June 30th, 2017. In the spring of 2015, we issued an RFP for auditing services. The firm of Malden and Jenkins from Macon was selected from that process for an initial initial year and then two option years, um, 2015 being the initial year, 2016 being the option year, and um, 2017 would be the second of those option years. <coughs> Um, we have a practice of uh, rotating auditors every three years. So this would be the final year for Malden and Jenkins, and we would go out with an RFP late in 2017, early 18, for uh, selection of another uh, auditor for the next, uh, probably the next three years. Malden and Jenkins' price was a flat $24,900 for each of those years, each of the three years that they bid. Um, and the Finance Committee uh, recommends uh, engaging the auditing firm of Walden and Jenkins to perform the financial audit of the JWSC for June 30, the fiscal year ending June 30, 2017, at a cost of $24,900. Any other questions? But this is our uh, this is the second half of the year. That's correct. Okay. And the next year we're going out with a bid. That's correct. You, you, it's state law now that is required. You three change years. auditors every three years. Yeah. I believe it's state law, correct? I'm not sure if it's state law. I know under Sarbanes Oxley for. Uh, okay, so it's under federal law. It, it's required. So. Did, uh, did the price stay the same as far as what they charge? Okay. Yes, sir. It was a flat fee for each of the three years. Okay. Same price each of the three years. Next. Have a motion? I'd like to make a motion. I move that the JWSC engage the accounting firm of Malden and Jenkins to perform the financial audit of the Brunswick Glen County Joint Water and Sewer Commission for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017, at a cost of $24,900. And that the chairman, the executive director, and the director of administration be authorized to sign the necessary documents. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. Ms. Johnny. Also, in your packages, you'll find a uh, memorandum on the delinquent payment policy. The Joint Water Sewer Commission has a significant number of accounts that are that have unpaid balances of over 60 or 90 and over 120 days. That the total of those uh, is approaching two million dollars. In order to efficiently and effectively collect those amounts while still allowing customers to maintain their services, um, we spend a significant amount of time in in uh, virtually redoing the delinquency policies that we follow. And um, these um, policies provide the uh, uh, uniform and equitable means to uh, effectively uh, allow customers to pay over time to satisfy those balances while still maintaining their water and sewer services. Um, we reviewed this policy with the uh, Finance Committee yesterday. To Behind the uh, policy is the, uh, the, uh, 
how we determine delinquencies. We, we read the meters and then we establish a billing date and the date the bills are actually uh, will be mailed out by our um, bill printing firm. Those are typically, those are due within 20 days of the bill. So I will allow another 10 days for payments to come in and then on the 31st day after the bill is uh, dated, the account will be in delinquency and the customer will be notified that they have uh, 10 days to come in and satisfy the account or establish a payment plan to satisfy that account. <coughs> Uh, the, um, we will have promissory notes with those payment plans and um, we actually we have established really three tiers of payment plans. First, the basic payment plan is if you have a balance of $500 or more in arrears, you have a minimum payment of $15 or 15% of the balance or $250, whichever is greater to establish the plan. And then the remaining arrears would be uh, paid in equal installments over six months to satisfy the debt. And I'm recognizing that some people may not have the financial wherewithal for that, um, we do we make provision for customers that are at 300% or less of the poverty level to um, set up a payment plan under the same terms except for the provision that we can extend the payments out up to two years rather than over the six month initial six month period. Um, that doesn't mean that all will go to two years, some maybe 12 months, 15 months, 18 months, and so on. Now for customers who are at or below 110% of the um, poverty level, <coughs> we'll be able to set up a plan which will allow them to pay at least $20 a month towards their arrears plus their current bill <coughs> to stay current in order to help catch up on their bill and to maintain their services. <coughs> now, in all cases, the, the JWSC can place liens on property if the customer is also the property owner for that, uh, for that particular service address. Now, customers who do not keep up with their payment plan and their current bill will be um, to be in default of their payment plan. And once that happens, the, uh, the full amount of the uh, of the balance due to the JWSC would have to be paid in order to restore service. Um, and once they default, they're not eligible for another payment plan. So this it makes them stay in compliance with that. Um, we also won't restore service to the to the service location where that customer where the debt is owed. Um, oftentimes, um, when we cut somebody off, some of their uh, some other member of the household will come in, open an account for that, and we wind up with a bad debt on that service. So. That service address and that customer uh, can't uh, reopen the account in that unless they set up pay the balance or set up a payment plan. Um, now, customers uh, that have previously defaulted on a bad debt that we've turned over to our collection agency, when they come in to open an account, they will have to pay any uh, amounts that have been previously turned over to collections in addition to the application fee and deposit and so on to open a new account as, as long as that debt is within the statute of limitations. And then the final paragraph um, goes into how we deal with customers that have filed bankruptcies. And following that, um, <coughs> the policy is a Excuse me, a summary of since the inception of the JWSC to the date of the uh, amount of uh, accounts receivable we've had at each year end. The final four columns are the amount of bad debts that we've had, the, uh, the column with write offs are the balances that we've actually written off and sent to collections or have had to write off because of bankruptcies or other reasons for not being able to collect on those accounts. 
And then there's a um, schedule of poverty levels and some documentation of this following that. This, again, this was reviewed by the Finance Committee yesterday, and uh, the Finance Committee recommends the adoption of the uh, Delinquent policy payment plan, the delinquent uh, payment policy. Mr. Chairman, I've got just a couple of comments for you. Right. One of the things that uh, I mentioned yesterday in the Finance Committee meeting was that <clears throat> John and I have done, uh, I think, an excellent job of trying to find a policy that will not only provide us uh, a good benefit in terms of reducing the amount of uh, bad debt issues we've got going forward. But it provides a, tr a transition tool to get us from where we are today to where we need to be to fully or more aggressively maintain the delinquent payment policy. Uh, one of the things we've got in front of us is the fact that currently we've got about $2 million in outstanding delinquent payments that are more than 60 days old. Uh, granted, one of those is uh, a single customer who has a $250,000 outstanding payment, but but the rest of them, $250,000 outstanding payment overdue. How do the customer get that far? It's a long story, but it's an institutional customer. Uh, there's legal actions tied to it, and that's all I can say. <laughs> Okay. They refuse to pay. Anyway, uh, to that end, we got a million, uh, 1.75 million approximately of bad debt out there that's more than 60 days old. How do we get in that shape? Uh, primarily, what I've been led to understand is that in past years, uh, folks from the community call this group and ask for concessions. And at that point, the concessions were made, and to be fair to all, concessions were made to all people at that point. I mean, you can't treat small groups of individuals differently than treat everybody else, and, and that's where it's come to. But at this point, with the current financial situation for our utility, and with the uh, need to become more aggressive in the way we enforce our uh, delinquent payment rules. Uh, we're putting this out there, and I want everyone on the commission to understand that you will be getting calls because our process is going to be, we've got some 4,500 people that fit into the 60-day plus group. 4,500 accounts, rather, not 4,500 people. There's you know, multiple people at each residence. But the, the, the thing that's going to happen is you will be getting calls, I feel certain, from some of them because there's, even with the uh, very lax uh, repayment policies we've, we've set up, we're still going to have folks that are not going to be happy. It's just the way life is. Uh, it's going to mean tough choices for some and very difficult situations for others, but we've got to be consistent on this. And at this point, uh, I'm going to say there's uh, a need for us to move forward in a, in a, in a way that we know that uh, you guys know that we're going to do what it takes. If, if, if citizens come to you, please send them to uh, us uh, rather than uh, interceding. We're, we're going to do our best to be fair to everyone and treat everybody the same, but we need to we need that to start. Uh, in the office, and that's what I've got to say about it. And the statements that Mr. Duncan are one reason for the uh, further buildup in the in those aged accounts. One of the other reasons is that we we haven't had a clear and uh, concise set of steps that will be published and and uh, communicated to to everyone as to how these um, accounts will be handled. Sometimes it turns into a negotiation every time somebody comes in the door. So, it, and that's very time consuming and, and it can take an hour for one customer to get through and get their account reestablished. That means only eight customers a day that we can, uh, can get a, uh, uh, some type of payment from. So it, there was uh, an administrative 
bottleneck, if you will, to getting these uh, accounts caught up. So this hopefully will streamline that process and be more efficient and effective at, uh, at, at our collection efforts. One last comment that I did leave off. If you, if everyone looks to the last page in the packet that John goes with what Mr. Donaghy has said, there's a chart on there. I asked uh, Mr. Donaghy to pull up the bad debt write-offs for the last five years. And for this year, if you project it forward to the end of the year, you can see what the number is on this chart, the table chart. If you put a straight line, fit a straight line to it, you can see what the trend is doing. So at some point, if we don't take a stand and start, you know, stop the bleeding, that's only going to go get worse. And so this is all part of the process to turn that trend around and, and slow down the bleeding, uh, especially in light of, again, the overall financial situation. Um, Chair, let me uh, comment on that too, if you don't mind. Um, and um, definitely, I mean, uh, gentlemen, you uh, kind of took some of the things I want to say about how do we let accounts get so big? Uh, the individuals who have um, accounts have gotten big, and is, is, is it the fault of the individual or the fault of our organization not uh, doing what we need to do? I know we try to be really nice to people and not cut the water off, whatever. But like you told me before, the cable company cut, cut the cable. Electric company cut, the, I mean, George Powell cut the power. But, you know, we somehow uh, just keep it going. And we're, we can't forgive all the debts because of our, uh, uh, even for the most uh, difficult financial situations because of our bond covenants. But what we're trying to do with the $20 minimum a month uh, add-on payment is provide a, a place that uh, people can reach and get to. We're not going to make somebody that's accumulated if they're in a, if you're, if you're a guy driving a Mercedes, we're going to expect you to come make good. But for the folks that are financially unable to come and make good, we want to have a tool for you to, even if it takes a long time to get it done, be able to work your way out of debt. Since we helped you get there, we're going to help you get out. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, I know you do have a couple of uh, customer service reps who are very stringent in just what the rule says. Sorry, I, I, I wouldn't that. Couple of times with a couple of people, uh, but as I said before, if we help them get there, so you're right. We need to help them get out of there. If, uh, if I may, Commissioner, there are there are as many uh, reasons for that for people getting late in their payments as there are people in those uh, that are, are late with their payments. Some simply don't pay that's until they're until we send them notice. But there are others who have large bills that will never get them paid. Uh, one lady in particular is uh, in her 80s. She owns her house, but the plumbing is very bad in it. She gets a leak fix, the bill runs up, we make an adjustment, but we, don't adjust, we can't adjust off the entire bill. Next month she has another leak, <laughs> and, and it just keeps compounding. And she lives on very limited social security. That's all she has. Um, one of our former commissioners made efforts to see if Habitat for Humanity could help or in other organizations and uh, we just weren't able to find her any help to get that plumbing fixed. So that's, that's a, a very sad case of uh, how a large balance is built up. Well, I think also uh, with our public relations, uh, we're going to have to do, uh, get this out there in a, in a better light as to what we're trying to do. Uh, we're going to have some issues with our new rates that we are getting ready to put out, so that's going to cause us to look differently to our community. And I think uh, when you put this out, to, out there as well, that the, the bugs going to have to stop. We can't keep that water flow. The water has to stop. If you don't pay your bill, you know, we have to do some things. So uh, I'm just saying, uh, commissioners, you know, we know that what, what's going to be happening, so we got to be aware of that when it starts stop flowing. Mm -hmm. so. um, also, Commissioner, we are, um, we will be issuing an RFP for the dollar roundup program that will be put into place and hopefully we'll be able to find 
um, an administrator, administrating firm for that that has access to other programs so that they can um, help people, such as the lady I spoke of earlier that has the leaks, help her get some of that fixed, along with helping with some assistance to bring her bill down and make a, a more coordinated effort at sure. helping those folks. That's it. John, I got one other question. Out of the 4,500, roughly, you know, do you or do we know how many fall in that 110% poverty level and the 300% poverty level and all? That um, these are it's probably the same as the population. What was the population number well, we found? In looking up some of these numbers, 18.7% of the people in Glynn County are at or below the poverty level. So I, I would assume that that same demographic would carry forward to our customer base. You, you'd, you'd be surprised that uh, some of the customers that have big or have plenty. So it's a, it's a, it's a strange mix of not uh, paying. Yep. Hey. Uh, any, uh, can I have a motion? Yes, sir. I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, since I'm a bit beat up anyhow. How about it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I make a motion. I move that JWC adopt the delinquent payment policy effectively immediately. Second. Any other discussion, comments, or questions? Where are you look? I was having a little conversation here with Mayor. I told him I think it's a well balanced policy. I think you know, we 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 got to do something. We can't talk about revenue sources where can we find more money when we have money sitting someplace. And we've been looking the other way. I, I'm not saying we've been looking the other way, but uh, where, where are we today? If we need to have a policy in place, I think this is about as fair as you can get. Call the question. Another comment? Yeah, yeah. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. Okay, we're not going to uh, do anything on the Peninsula Development Agreement until after executive session. So we'll move on to discussion of the uh, 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 Run Blue Clinton County Joint Water Sewer Commission website update. Mr. Sellers. Thanks, Now, hopefully this will be the shortest presentation I ever give you because I'm running the camera and it has a limitation of 30 minutes. So I can't go any longer than 30 minutes or else I have to go over right there and get recording it. <laughs> Should be brief. So we received two complaints over the past few months regarding the website. A, that it isn't mobile friendly. And I was able to see using the back end of the website that 68% of our traffic is coming from mobile devices. So it'd be nice if we would cater to the need. And we, B, have to navigate through too many links to find what you need. So I don't dispute either one of those. Being solely responsible for, for having to redesign the website back in 2014. And we've been making small changes internally over the course of time that really cater to the needs of staff more so than the needs of customers. So I uh, really took a step back and started reviewing other websites we pursued two options within the Public Information and Customer Relations Committee. The first option was to research the cost of having the redesign of the website outsourced. And we, uh, we have seen enough of the contracts for similar sized utilities and municipalities to know that some of those contracts are in the, in the range of 34000 to 125000 for website redesign. Wasn't really excited about that, that range, so we considered plan B to make the changes in-house. And as the expense isn't in this current budget, it's not in the proposed budget, uh, not a high priority, we considered plan B. So we have the talent, it was a matter of time. So I, I buckled down over the last couple of weeks and made some significant changes in-house now, keep in mind that I'm not a professional web developer. I, I have done enough sites to know what I believe looks good, but there's always going to be some compromise. And we 
faced with the two complaints that we had, started looking at iPad, iPhone, Samsung Galaxy devices, everything but a flip phone. I can't really accommodate a flip phone. It's hard to get the data that we want presented in front of somebody's eyes, like Colonel Bowman's flip phone there. It's, it's hard to get the layout satisfactory for the flip phones and the Blackberries. You remember the Blackberry or the Palm Trio. So there, are, there are some legacy devices out there that, that we weren't going to be able to accommodate because of the flow of information. But the changes that we made, we wanted to make the website more, more mobile friendly, the layout's more responsive to different devices. Oh, and I, and I should pull up the live site because I do have some screenshots from the other devices, but those of you that remember just the last meeting, this is what you would have pulled up, where the news feed was the home page. And I also had a slew of big red buttons along the side. We've eliminated those big red buttons because uh, within the committee we had discussed, well, what's the possibility that from a psychological standpoint, you're ignoring the banner at the top that's displaying what is a service outage, a very important concept. But I had all of these, well, in fact, if we go to the commission related page, which I haven't completely eliminated the red on, as you scroll down the page that's focused on the history of the JWSC and then those beautiful faces, <laughs> there are still some red buttons that I need to eliminate. It's good, it's good logic. If you see a lot of red, then nothing's important anymore. So the, this banner is now gonna be very prominent on all devices, so that's what I had those, those devices. This is my wife's iPad. You can get an idea of how the pages look on an iPad. The buttons are, are going to flow with the size of the screen, so that's a, a referred to as a responsive website. It's not locked down in its, in its screen size. So likewise, this is a, an iPhone, that's my phone. And you can see how when you get to an iPhone, the buttons get into a thinner column. Oh, and as far as, well, the buttons were there more or less. They were at the bottom of the screen. My, my, my brother-in-law was quick to point out that if you wanted to pay your bill on our website, you had to scroll through all of the news on your mobile device. And the pay your, pay your bill online button would have been at the bottom. So that wasn't user-friendly at all. And so here we have the news laid out, the subscribe to updates page, which by the way is soon going to be not replaced by, but, but uh, uh, in addition to subscribing to our website for updates on RFPs or subscribing for the news feed, you'll also be able to subscribe to be part of the emergency notification system that should be rolling out likely by the first week of July. I didn't want to time that in such a way that people were overwhelmed with change of billing system and, and the notification system as well. So because of the bill stuffer, we're going to be notifying them on the bill stuffer that they're going to be opted in and they'll have to choose to not receive that emergency notification. And then the commission related page, I can't scroll on this because it's a screenshot, but you get the idea is that your face is the first thing they see, Chairman Elliott, but the small history of the JWSC. And uh, customer service, I, I, I should mention here that under the previous website design, customer service had two links at the top. And, and it was a choose your own adventure whether you're a residential customer or a commercial customer. The problem is if you went to one of those pages, it would then send you to another page that had the forms that you would need. And the forms aren't that, that different. So what we have done now is we've created one customer service page that has all of that information right here. So if you can imagine, there were eight pages that were needed to accomplish the same thing we now have with one. The goal was to have no more than three clicks to get anything within our website. A lot more user friendly. We, we uh, are going to continue making some small changes that are going to be necessary to really make it consistent. For instance, just to give you a, an idea of a similar design that the City of Savannah has using their Civic Plus design website. When you go to a department page, which that's a new function as well, by the way, simplifying the departments. Todd Klein's face is, is there indicating that he is the chair of the department, and we'll have some more information loaded here that's related. I'm going to meet with every division head and see what they want on their page so that the, well, who they perceive to be their primary clients are going to be able to get the information they want very quickly. And none of the news posts were removed. As far as data is concerned, because of the content management system that we use, any change that we make on the front end, uh, the database still 
stay stocked with all of the old news. So we, we, when we rolled out this design in 2014, went through a, a matter of, of months of loading in the old data as I had time, and the minutes go back to 2008, some of which go back to 2006, believe it or not. Barbara Rogers, um, previously serving the duty as a uh, clerk, did keep some of the initial minutes prior to the formation. So we do have all of the old data still on the website, and that happens anytime we make a change. And let's say that we contract this out later. We come across a big bag of cash, and we decide we want to have somebody, an outside firm, somebody that, that isn't me, do a, a, a theme redesign to make it prettier, to make it more user-friendly. Then we can say, okay, we're using WordPress as a content management system. Let's go ahead and just do a new theme. Kind of like Amazon. When you go to some websites, they'll have a Thanksgiving theme, or they'll have a Christmas theme. So this design here, the grass in the back, the child, the beach, that's been the same design we've been using since 2014. It's fine, there's nothing broken about it, but if we wanted something fresher, the most immediate thing we can do is to turn that banner image on the top into a gallery. So Mr. Junkin's suggestion, I believe. If we have five pictures that scroll across, and if you click on that picture, it takes you to a different big piece of news. For instance, we might have one next week that says, if you're concerned about your water bill and your delinquent balance, here, here's where you can go to sort that out. The, the general rule is now no more than three clicks. So you'll hold me to that. There are going to be things that pop up and we're going to try to uh, accommodate that as best we can so that it will be as user friendly as possible. For you in particular, Chairman Elliott mentioned to me in staff meeting Tuesday, great job on the redesign, but did you notice that you got rid of the employee login button and now the commissioners probably don't know how to check their mail. I moved that to the bottom, I apologize, I didn't warn you. That wasn't nice of me. I'll do push-ups. But now if you, if you do use the website to check mail, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and click the employee login button. It's just a small link now instead of the big red employee login button. And the uh, admin login, there are a handful of us that go in and, and post items on here, so that's, that's on the bottom as well as it always has been. I've simplified the links on the bottom so that they're single click, I want to get to pay my bill. I want to know the rates, fees, and charges. If I click there, look at that guy. So it, it, it is going to be simpler. We do link to outside agencies so that somebody's coming into town and they thought about setting up their water service, but they also need to know who to get cable from or, or uh, power. Chamber of Commerce, City of Brunswick, Glen County. So that's where we stand now, and then I'd like to revisit this as we likely get into the, the 2019 budget so that we can consider either outsourcing or doing something more significant as a design change. But we'll be standing by in the Public Information and Customer Relations Committee to make any changes that are good for the customers. Any questions? No, thank you very much for your reference. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yeah. Would you please go over um, what you discussed in the staff meeting regarding the want to cry uh, computer hack, I guess, is the best thing to say? Certainly. And our protections on that? Certainly, yes, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll preface it by saying that we're not strangers to ransomware. A, a few years back, we had a, a staff member that clicked on an, an attachment in an email that didn't seem to be that big of a deal. Oftentimes, it'll look like something that you're expecting, and the, the scammers are so good at making a vague message that's enticing. Especially if you're a member of Chase Bank and you get an email from Chase, phishing scams. It looks like it's from Chase. You click on an email, the website looks like it's from Chase. You start enter information and the next thing you know, you uh, can't access your accounts and somebody's in the Poconos with your credit card. number. In the case of WannaCry, very similar to the ransomware that we had before. And the ransomware in particular, unlike a phishing scam, rans ransomware says you click here, it's going to start uh, spreading to the files on the network, not just your local machine. In this case, uh, a few years back, it actually attacked one of the file share folders for the finance division and locked down a bunch of spreadsheets that people used for daily working files. Crippling almost immediately. I'm, John's breaking sweat just having this, this talk. We had, we had a lot of files that were locked down that we needed access to quickly. So INS was on the case at the time, and this it, that was what's referred to as a a zero-day exploit. Nobody had, had, had any way to protect us from that because it was brand spanking new and, and we were a, an early victim of the crime. We were presented with a red box that said uh, pay $500 via Bitcoin within 24 hours or your files will be lost forever. 
and uh, we we paid the ransom reluctantly, having you know, there was no uh, precedent for us to know whether that was the right thing to do or not. We contacted the FBI. The FBI said, "Hey, if you pay that, you're going to be dealing you know uh, with a criminal, a terrorist, somebody that's trying to ex extort money out of you." So we paid it. Lo and behold, within 24 hours, we didn't get an email with the key to unlock our files. We, we saw in the news that the FBI had arrested the fellow in Russia. So uh, INS did go through the process of finding the tools that were necessary to unlock our files, and it took, I believe, if I recall correctly, about two weeks. Within a month, we had access to everything, and it was wrong. Yeah. So the, the process was, I lost sleep, John lost sleep, I'm sure Mike Jarrock with INS lost sleep, so we weren't happy about it. But uh, now, so with WannaCry, we're now faced with a similar situation, but we have experience. INS was on the case on Saturday, started to update the uh, Crypto Locker, I believe is the name of the software. They have, a, they have a, a platform that they use to distribute updates to computers remotely. They started distributing that on Saturday. We communicated on Monday at 8 o'clock. And uh, but by Tuesday at staff meeting, we were aware of the final 10 computers that needed to be touched. So we're going through those now and, and updating those manually. And uh, at this point, we, we have confidence that if an email makes it into the firewall, it's going to get caught. If it gets through the firewall, it's going to get caught by the software. And, and hopefully, since we do have jittery staff now, we won't have anybody clicking on attachments unless they trust the, the sender. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Lani. Commissioners, uh, in your packages are the financial statements for the uh, period ending April 30th of 2017. And the first of those being the balance sheet. And again, as in prior months, you can see that the second line down under current assets, the bond sinking fund is um, two point, just short of $2.6 million. There will be one more deposit to that at the end of May. And after that deposit, the bond trustee will put bond holders interest and principal payments on June 1st. Um, the, interest, the principal schedule for June 1 is $1.94 million and um, $928,500 interest will be paid off at that time. That will bring our, um, our bonds down to, you can see under the long-term debt portion of the bonds payable, $37,515,000. And that bond started at just over $50 million. So we have paid down about $13, $14 million of that. Um, under the restricted cash accounts, you'll see that the uh, JWSC reserves are, um, are down, there's a, uh, Offsetting that is an increase in the uh, construction and progress under capital assets, which is the, the projects that we're, we have in process and are uh, completing, and which the uh, reserve cash is being used to fund. Those are my comments on the balance sheet. After that is the uh, supplemental schedule of cash balances. These are the actual cash balances in our banks. August or April 31st, April 30th. Following that is a four page um, commission report of the revenues and expenditures of the commission through the first 10 months of the fiscal year. On page one, um, about halfway down, we'll see our total operating revenues. On a prorated basis, we should be at about $23,467,000 of revenue. We're at $24,473,000, approximately $1 million ahead of the revenues for the year. The uh, remainder of those pages, bottom page one, two, and three, are the um, category expenditures for each of the divisions, the set of divisions. At the bottom of page three of four, you'll see that our total operating expenditures on a pro rata basis should be about 18 million five eighty for the year budget-wise. We're at um, 18 million four nineteen, which is 160 thousand dollars off the budget for the year. 
on page four, the final page of this document, you see our total revenues over expenditures about in the middle. Um, actual year to date is $7.485 million. Um, from that operating, that's um, actual revenues and expenditures, the uh, payment of debt principal, capital purchases, and funding for, of reserves are actually balance sheet transactions that require cash. And after those are subtracted, we're about $2.4 million of revenues over expenditures for the year. And under that, you'll see we have purchase orders outstanding for goods and services that will be purchasing, uh, that will be delivered or invoiced by the end of the year, which leaves us about uh, just, just over $250,000 of revenues over expenditures. We were very, very close to break even for the first 10 months of the year. The last page of the statement is the uh, financial progress on the, uh, the uh, capital projects that we have, uh, have underway. <coughs> at the bottom of that, you'll see our reserve balances at the beginning of the year, how much we've deposited for the year, how much we've actually had in cash outlays and expenditures for the, so far, and the encumbrances that we have for those less the amount that uh, we expect we'll still have to spend um, in additional expenditures or encumbrances, which leaves an available um, pool of funds for projects of uh, about $3.8 million. Now that's assuming that all the projects are completed, paid for and completed at, by end of year. Of course, that is uh, a bit of a moving target. As far as the repair and replacement fund, you see we're about $129,000 short. Right? As of April 30th, we expect uh, two more deposits to that by end of year, $583,000 in total, which would leave us about $450,000 of repair and replacement funds available at year end to go into new projects. If anyone has any questions, if you have to try to answer them now or look them up later for you. Commissioners, anyone have any questions, discussions? Who's that? No questions. I've got a comment, Mr. Chairman. The only thing I want to say it has nothing to do with the noise. Uh, is I think with all the discussions about the financial situation of our utility and the issues we're facing, I want to I want to draw make sure everybody picks up on that last comment that John made. The ending balance is going to be projected to be 453, 454,000 for June 30. If you look back up here on the fourth line from the bottom, it says repair and replacement reserve. We started this year on 6.30 of 16 at 5 million 91,000. So we're, we're basically going through the reserves we had to take care of the issues that are out there that we're having to fix on the go as we go. Just want to make sure everybody's aware that we're taking a 90% hit just through this fiscal year. Those numbers are the funds that are available the uncommitted funds that are available to put to new projects. It's, they're not, they don't necessarily relate to the actual cash balances that are there because of timing of expenditures and so on. But that's the amount that we could commit to new projects. Funds available to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay. Is that the director's update? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple quick things. We're, uh, I want to point out that the staff's been working hard since the initial rate workshop with the commission. And we, we think, based on the current numbers and the model, we've reduced the uh, 
overall expenditures by uh, nearly two million and that we've gotten our rates down from what I think was projected to be about a 14.7 down to approximately 10% on average for our customers for the coming year. So we've made some serious progress there. Um, second item on we're making one of the tasks that was brought up at that time when we talked about capital needs was we, we talked about the fact that the Academy Creek, Dunbar Creek, wastewater treatment plants both had some substantial needs for rehab and refurbishment. In addition, we have learned in the last few weeks that uh, concrete gravity lines downstream by our SPLOS projects are in terrible shape. We've done the initial estimates for that. We've also learned that our uh, second SPLOS project, the demolition of lift station 403, uh, 4003, and the construction of gravity lines to replace that station uh, is substantially short of budget by about 3.5 million. We're doing the assessments right now. We've got uh, two different consultants looking at those issues, trying to refine those numbers, and we're going to be using those numbers to prepare us for a uh, proposed bond issue this fall to go out and fund those things. Uh, I think that's uh, going to be the last of our uh, major bond issuance for a long time. Um, I guess the last, and that was it. That's my uh, updates for right now. I think everything else we've covered in terms of great structure and other issues. Okay. I don't really have any uh, update other than that. Uh, any other commissioners have anything else they'd like to discuss in open session? Uh, if not, could I have a uh, motion to go into executive session? Motion to go into executive session. Second. And all in favor, please raise your right hand. And we will reconvene at 3 10. And will we have a. Uh, no, no. There won't be a vote. There will not be a vote. No. Okay. I'm going to get with that lady and just tell her. I'll talk okay. To her. Uh, Please move to come out of executive session. I'll make a motion we come out of executive session. Please second. Second. No, we can't. Oh, yeah, no, we can't. 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 We